TV everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you can join me once again today. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be starting off a series of videos on the basics of Unreal Engine. And so this particular video, or video series rather, was actually a request from one of my subscribers. Um, so to King Art Studio, thank you so much for making the request. And yeah, so I'm going to be doing, I was hoping to do one long video covering everything, but it's going to probably be, end up being two or three hours. So I decided to break it up into small bits. Um, so I'm going to be doing videos of plus minus 15 minutes each. What I'm hoping to cover in this video series is basically everything from installing Unreal Engine right up to rendering inside Unreal Engine. So in today's video, we'll be covering, uh, we'll be looking at the minimum system requirements. That's how far back we're going. And then we'll be also looking at how to install Unreal Engine. So you've got the Epic Launcher as well as Unreal Engine. What's the difference? Why do I have to install both? We'll talk through that. And then if time allows, which I'm sure it will, we'll be looking at the user interface of Unreal Engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the UE interface with iClone's interface and I'll show you guys the similarities. And actually that is not that much different. So if you're a first time Unreal user or if you're an iCloner who wants to take your projects to the next level in terms of rendering, then this is the video series for you. So going forward, we'll look at the content browser. We'll be going through item for item. So in other words, what comes with Unreal and what can I acquire in terms of freebies, as well as I'm going to make a couple of recommendations to you guys on what you should get if you're not keen on doing blueprints or if you know nothing about scripting. Um, and then we'll also be looking at, as the request from my subscriber, we'll be looking at the auto setup plugin that Reillusion has made available to us, as well as the live link plugin. What's the difference when I use which? And then I'll take it further in the next subsequent weeks. We'll be looking at, actually, I'll, I'll talk you guys through lighting inside Unreal because that's quite important. Uh, I've got what I call a five-point lighting system. I'll talk you guys through that. And then hopefully at the end of all of this, I'll also show you guys how to get the best possible renders inside Unreal Engine. I'll talk you guys through the settings. So the whole plan is to make this a very simple step-by-step -step process so that you guys don't get stuck along the way. You are welcome to ask your questions in the comments below if anything is confusing or if you have any additions you want to make, I'm also open to that. So guys, Let's get going and we're going to start off by looking at the system requirements and how to actually install this wonderful piece of software. Enjoy. A good place to start is obviously the download page on the Unreal Engine website. So that's the first place I'd go if I were you. And then the first thing you'll notice if you look at the actual download page are the minimum system requirements. Let's go through that quickly because that's quite important. Um, so they've got the relevant operating system you need. And you'll notice that there's a tab for Windows, Mac and Linux. So you can actually download Unreal on any of those operating systems. But we're going to be focusing on Windows for the sake of our exercise. I'll also have a look at the minimum RAM requirements. And then what about graphics card, I hear you ask. Uh, let's have a quick look to see what the requirements are in terms of graphics cards. Here we go. Graphics card, DirectX 11 or 12 compatible graphics card. Okay, so what does that even mean? Let's see if we can find something else down here. Ah, graphics card. These are the drivers. Here we go. A typical system used at Epic. Let's have a look to see what they say here. Now, obviously, they can't be prescriptive in terms of your system. But I think this indirectly suggests that you have at least a NVIDIA Geoforce 2080 Super graphics card. So that's where I would suggest you start if you want to get a graphics card. And then also they suggest a 2 terabyte SSD. Now I have to say that the size and the speed of your solid state hard drive is important because these files are enormous. You'll pick that up when you save your first project file. So you do need a lot of space. Um, and then in terms of ray tracing, I'm not sure if you know what that is, but ray tracing basically allows you to get better quality visuals and shadows uh, or path tracing uh, as well. Uh, for that, you require do require an RTX uh, graphics card. So uh, 30 series or 40 series graphics card. RTX standing for ray tracing, obviously that's what the RT stands for. First thing we need to do is download the Epic Launcher. Then after we've downloaded the Epic Launcher, then we can only download Unreal Engine 5, the actual software. I know that might sound a bit confusing, but I'll explain the difference to you later. To download the Epic Launcher, you have to scroll down uh, and then you'll see the Download Launcher tab. You can click on that and it'll start the download. After downloading the launcher, you need to create yourself an Epic account uh, and then sign into your new Epic account. And once you've done that, you gotta just play the game to prove to them that you are not a bot. And once all of that is done, you'll be greeted by the Epic Game Launcher window, which looks like this. Now, I know that um, if you're seeing it for the first time, it can look overwhelming, but I promise you it's actually quite user-friendly. Let's go through some of the tabs inside this particular window. So there are five main tabs, which you'll see at the top of the screen. Tab number one is with the one we're currently on, is the Muse tab. 
and I'm sure you can figure this out quite quickly just looking at this particular page this is where Epic gives any new information and new projects that they're busy with and if you know Epic you know they're always up to something new so I do visit this particular page sometimes and then tab 2 is uh, where you'll find your samples and these are sample projects uh, like LIDAR which is a game template you can check that out and then the one project that I really thought was brilliant was the True to Life City, uh, which you can download here as well. Uh, I would suggest you do that, but be warned, this is a massive file. But if you want to see the amazing visuals inside Unreal Engine 5, then I'd recommend you have a look at that. Then tab 3 is our marketplace, um, and I'm sure you've guessed this. This is where you can buy your assets, your characters, your props, your sets, and all those kinds of things. And yeah, I do visit this particular tab quite often. If I can just make a suggestion to you, when you can and once you've gotten to the stage I would suggest you start downloading some free content immediately and I would suggest you start with the free for this month items because as the name suggests these are items you can only get for free this particular month I've already downloaded mine and uh, these free projects are not um, small ones they're actually brilliant ones um, so I'll definitely start with that once you've done that you can then add the permanently free collection contents to your basket and acquire them as well this might take you a while though because there are loads and loads of items here like this one i'll show you one of my favorites this is by one of my favorite authors of uh, 3d models and his name is alexander ivanov i've mentioned him in one of my other tutorials before and this was a free download called stylized egyptian environment and i love his stylized things and his stylized sets i basically got his whole collection. Then there is the fourth tab, which is the library tab. And this is in fact the tab I spend most of my time in. And in fact, this is the tab you need to get to to download the actual Unreal Engine program. In the library, you'll see here, not only can you download Unreal Engine, but you'll also see your projects will show up here. Um, as you can see, these are my projects. And if you scroll down, you'll find your vault. Your vault is basically where all your assets that you've acquired are for you to install them into your project. As you can see, I've got quite a few items here. It's nearly 100 gigabytes of products, in fact. And as I mentioned before, 90% of them I got for absolutely nothing. Uh, I have, uh, however, purchased a few items uh, during the marketplace sales. And in fact, what I want to do is just make a couple of suggestions to you and just make some recommendations. And no, I'm not getting paid by the developers for these particular suggestions. Um, I'm mentioning them to you because if you're like me, you're not very really keen on creating blueprints for yourself. I would suggest getting things that you can literally drag and drop onto your objects. Uh, and yeah, I want to focus mostly on materials and textures. So if you can, I would suggest this particular pack. It's the 300 plus ultimate PBR materials. And as you can see, it's got everything in here from brick materials to concrete, fabric, creative floors right down to hood so this is a good place to start um, then there's also the 4k wall materials which has got even more materials for your walls and then the advanced glass material pack is also one i uh, definitely advise um, you can see it's got not just normal stained glass and clear glass but it's also got cracked glass as well and these packs all come with materials that you can literally drag and drop onto your assets it's very similar to the substance uh, the, i think it's 200 pack that iCloud has um, so I'd start with that and I think these I can't remember the price but I know it was cheaper than the actual ones that you get in iClone and yes you could possibly bring those PBR packs from iClone into Unreal Engine but to be very honest with you I think the quality of the materials inside Unreal Engine is way better and that's obviously because it's meant for this particular software and in the last tab our fifth tab is the twin motion tab I actually never used that before uh, but this twin motion is basically um, where you can create high quality real-time visualization and it's meant mostly for architecture or for fashion or transport or if you are creating consumable products and you want to showcase them you can do that inside to in motion which is a brilliant brilliant visualization of your 3d objects uh, you're obviously welcome to check that out on your own but the reason we're here is to actually install unreal engine so that's our next step let's get started with installing unreal engine version 5.1 so what you need to do is, if you look on the left hand side, you'll see four tabs there. Go to the bottom one, which says Unreal Engine. Click on that and that will open up this window where you can't miss it. It's the big tab, the yellow tab on the right hand side of the top of the screen is where you install the actual engine. So the, the launcher is only there to take you through these tabs, but it isn't actually the software you're going to be using to do your animation in your rendering. So this particular link uh, takes you to the download page for Unreal Engine 5.1. Next up, you gotta choose where you wanna install your software. Uh, just bear in mind that it is a massive file. I think it's plus minus 60 gigabytes. Uh, I would suggest you save it on some form of SSD. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier on, if you've got an NVMe SSD, even better because uh, it also helps you to open up the software much quicker if you've got one of those hard drives. 
Once installed, you'll now have two shortcuts on your desktop. The one that we've already been busy with is the Epix Game Launcher, and the new item on your desktop will be Unreal Engine 5, which is the software itself. Now, clicking on Unreal Engine 5, that shortcut uh, will take you straight to the projects page. All right, finally, we're inside Unreal Engine 5, the program. This is exciting stuff. Now, to create our project, we are going to choose the, there's a couple of options here. We're going to choose the Film, Video and Live Events tab because we're creating a form. You'll be given some more options now in terms of the type of project you want to create. For our case, we're going to click a blank project because we're going to create a project from scratch. Let's name our project. Um, so I'm going to name it school, school underscore hallway because we are going to be importing a, pro a project next week from iClone into Unreal Engine and it's basically a school hallway, but you'll, you'll see that next week. Oh, and uh, the underscore that I've got between school and hallway, it's not by choice. Something you need to note is that unlike iClone, Unreal does not accept any spaces between your text characters. So you have to add an underscore in there for it to make sense. Once you've done that, you can now create your project. So when you create a new project, it does take a long time before it actually installs. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's basically installing the starter content for you and then compiling all of the shaders, which takes quite a long time to do. Fortunately, it's only for the first time that you're actually opening up the new project. And uh, very grateful for the fact that Unreal was kind enough to leave us with a counter, which basically gives us some idea of the progress and how long we're going to have to wait before it actually opens. Alright, finally there we go, our project is open. Great stuff now for a quick tour through Unreal Engine 5's user interface. So when your project opens, the first thing you'll notice is the massive viewport. And like iClone's viewport, it's basically where all of your items are. The difference obviously here is that in iClone you'll find it somewhere in the middle, whereas in Unreal Engine you'll find it on the left hand side of the screen. So let's run through some of the navigation keys so that you can find your way around the viewport. Here, I'm going to assume that you're doing this with a mouse. So on your mouse, first thing you can do is you can scroll the mouse wheel forward. If you do that, you'll zoom in. On your perspective view and obviously if you scroll your mouse wheel backwards you'll be zooming out which is kind of obvious and then holding the left mouse button while dragging to the right will rotate your view or perspective to the right and then of course holding the left mouse button and dragging it to the left hand side will rotate your view perspective to the you guessed it left hand side and if you hold the left and right mouse buttons and add push up you'll notice that you actually pan directly up, which is quite cool. And then obviously the opposite's true as well. Hold on your left mouse button and right mouse button and drag down and you'll see it pans your view perspective directly down. And then if you hold the left mouse button and you drag forward, it'll actually give you a slow zoom in, which I must be honest with you, gives you a lot more control, especially when you try to focus on something. All right, that's the basic controls. Let's go back to our user interface. The second window is, uh, which you'll find on the top on the right hand side, is called the Outliner. And this window is similar to iClone's Scene window, uh, basically where you'll be able to select any of the assets that are loaded into your scene. Here you can see some of the items I have in my scene at the moment. The first one right on top is the Atmospheric Fog. Now if you click on any item, like I'm doing here, you'll see it'll bring up the attributes on uh, this particular asset in this window just below it. And the window at the bottom that I'm referring to is called the Details window. And for those of you who know iClone, uh, this is like the modify window, basically where you can change the various attributes of the item you've selected in the, in the top window. Um, so let's check this out quickly. So if I select my floor here, notice what happens automatically uh, in the viewport, you'll see this, my floor is highlighted with a yellow outline. And this basically indicates that I've currently selected my floor. All right, let's talk through some of the translation tools, which is very similar to iClone. So this will sound familiar to most of your iCloners. So when you click on an item, uh, the transform gizmo will appear automatically, just like it does in iClone. Now you can grab your item, and if you want to lift it up or down, you can do that by pulling the, well, the basically the blue Z axis arrow. You pull it up, or you can move it down. If you want to move it to the left or the right, you can grab the red X axis arrow and then you can either pull it to the left or to the right. And then of course, you can also do the same thing by pushing it back or forward. That's where the green Y axis arrow is. It's exactly the same as it is in iCloud. So the three transformation tools uh, can be found on the top screen. This is where you'll find it. Basically near the right corner of the main viewport. Let's have a quick look at the rotation tool, uh, which I'm going to click, uh, which looks like a circular icon. Once selected, you can now rotate your object in any of the three axes, basically. So let's rotate our floor on the red x-axis. 
So as I rotate it, you'll notice that there's actually a, it basically shows you the rotation increments, which is 10 degrees at a, at a time. But what if I want to do something smaller, like 5 degrees? Well, if that's what you want to do, then you've got to click on this particular icon here. Click the drop down arrow, you've got a choice of your angle increments, with the smallest one being 5 degrees. Let's select 5 degrees, and let's see what that does if I rotate my floor now. Alright, there we go, 5 degrees. Alright, now I know your next question to me is, but Alistair, what if I want to basically just rotate about 1 degree, how do I do that? Then, you'll have to go into the details window, the window I just referred to early on. So make sure you select your item and then go into the details panel. Now scroll all the way up and you'll see what looks like a table. That's your transformation table. And again, to those who got iClone, it should look familiar to you. And now all you gotta do is basically enter how many degrees you wanna shift it by. And manually enter my angle, which in my case is one degree. Let's enter one degree. And there we go. It's rotated by only one degree. So that's how you rotate your items. The last transformation tool, as you know, is the scale tool. I don't think I have to spend too much time speaking to this because it works exactly the same as our previous tools. Yeah, so you can basically grab your item. Uh, if you grab the, the big little box in the middle and you drag that up or down, that will either scale your object up or down. Otherwise, if you want to just scale it on one axis, you can just grab that particular axis and manipulate the length uh, one side at a time or individually. And of course, it goes without saying that you can actually enter a specific size inside the table we just spoke about now, but this time you'll be entering it in the scale uh, size, either the X, Y, or Z axis. Uh, and just for interest's sake, and we will be doing a much more detailed tutorial on lighting, uh, it's nice to know that you can actually rotate your light uh, inside your viewport as well by using the tools we just explained early on. And that's where I'm going to call it for today's tutorial. So if you found even one thing helpful today, then please don't forget to subscribe. And if you're keen to see the follow-up tutorials in this particular series, then don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out. And yeah, as much as I'd love to upload at least one video every week, uh, editing these videos do take a long time, but be rest assured I'll keep uploading them as soon as they become available. Until next time, cheers everyone.